Hello, hello. Just wanted to let you know that this episode is powered by our friends at Alpert and Associates. Pesach is almost here and you need to plan accordingly. And that doesn't just mean scrubbing your floors and cleaning your car. That means planning financially. This episode that we did with Montes Gilbert is all about finances. So make sure you give someone like Moshe Alpert a call. That's 718-644-1594. Something that, that I do, I think is also super important is you have a kid. There's no reason why you shouldn't have a fund in that child's name that maybe when they're bar mitzvah or their wedding or they're going to seminary that you look into that account and boom, you've been saving money for all these years thanks to the work from Moshe Alpert. And that all could be done with him in his office. You can give him a call at 718-644-1594 or email him at alpertmoshe at gmail.com. And a big thank you to our friends at Collars & Co., I've heard so many people have ordered this shirt since we aired it last week, the ad. I'm wearing it right now. Happy to be. I wore it on this episode as well that you're about to watch. And um, the one I'm wearing is the dress collar polo. It's short sleeve. It's got four buttons. Looks like a full on dress shirt. The collar is nice and hard. 15% off. That's what we're giving you. 15% off. You use promo code meaningful. It's not case sensitive, uppercase, lowercase, whatever you want to do. And you get free shipping for any order over $99. They now have a new shirt as well. The Quadruplex shirt. Quadruplex? Did I say that right? I don't even know. But it's a long sleeve shirt with full buttons, long sleeve, hard collar, cuffs. Listen, many of you have already ordered it. And the feedback I've been getting from you is that it's the most comfortable shirt in the world. So go ahead. Head to collarsandco.com. That's collarsandco.com and order this shirt while they still have availability. It's perfect for Pesach, per- perfect for Yontif, and I guarantee you, you will love it. Hello, everybody. And you are back. We're back. Right back here. We're back. Welcome back. At the at the Meaningful People podcast. I almost said. <laughs> you I am- got this, Naki. You got this. I almost said the Daily Thread. Oh, my gosh. Interesting. Oh, my God. Freaked me out. Okay. Welcome back to the Meaningful People podcast. Yes, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here. Um, and we have an episode for you today, don't we? We really do, by the way. It's Gewalt. A, it's a Gewaltic one. And we're always, always, we're always wor- worried about our finances, making sure our finances are okay. And we sat down with somebody who is doing something about that. His name is Matis Gilbert. Maybe you know him, maybe you don't. But he is the founder of an organization called RSK, or Shaila's Kitchen. Uh, from Rav Shaila Karastir. Momo, what do you think about this episode? Very, very Halegiyid Ramatis. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing about your organization and what has gone into you know making this possible. Um, and I think what was particularly cool about this episode is that, yes, RSK does a tremendous amount of chesed with middle-class families, with families that are you know looking for a little bit of support uh, temporarily, through the tkufa that they find themselves in, but also on a broader scale, RSK is doing such incredible work with financial coaching and really addressing something in the community, regardless of income class, just empowering people to actually take a look at their finances and create a spending plan and just looking what they're, what they're capable of. Absolutely. And I think this time of year is particularly timely um, as we move into you know the yumtif season, and there's a lot of shopping and a lot of yumtif planning, and having a handle on finances is particularly important. Nachi, I I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more, and that's why we're right? excited to present this episode to you. Paying off groceries as well. How I'll, are you? They do such halic stuff, right? I'll tell you, a, a friend of mine, um, Rabbi Rucham <laughs> Rakow, rem- reminded me recently of something um, that. A lot of times people are looking to have what they want and very often the avoid is really to want what we have instead of having what we want and being able to take a look at what we have and really want that and not necessarily, you know, looking beyond and looking elsewhere, but just really introspecting and and looking at what we have and, and being appreciative for it, grateful for it. Um, he actually shared an incredible muscle he said that there was a guy, American guy, who very successful businessman, and he goes out to an island in Punta Cana somewhere and encounters a fisherman who is, you know, fishing. And the businessman asks the fisherman, he's like, So what do you like, how do you spend your day? 
So he's like, well, I fish for, you know, like an hour, maybe 90 minutes, and I catch enough fish for the day. Um, and the, the businessman is like, and then what do you do? He's like, well, then I, you know, I come home and I bring the fish home and we eat and I go on a walk with my wife and I spend time with my kids. And then very often I'll take a nap and then I'll maybe go on another walk. And he's describing this day. And the businessman is like, dude, like I'm an MBA. Let me explain to you how this works. You're going to go out on this boat. You're going to work for like eight to 10 hours. You're going to catch enough fish to buy a bigger boat. Then you're going to bring a couple of friends with you. And he starts like describing this business plan for scaling his fisherman business. And he describes this whole plan. And the guy's like, well, how long is this going to take me? So he's like, well, till you get to your, you know, to your goal of like selling the whole fisherman's conglomerate, it'll take you probably, you know, 15, maybe 20 years. Hmm. And the guy says, well, then what am I going to do? He says, well, then you're going to sell the whole thing and you'll have enough for like early retirement. And he's like, and then what am I going to do? He's like, well, then you'll have time to just like come home and spend time with your wife and spend time with your kids and walk around the block and take a nap. And the fisherman's looking at this guy and saying, I'm doing that right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's what I'm doing right now. And like, instead of, instead of having what we want, let's just take a look at what we have and want that. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better. It's a beautiful muscle. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, I'd like to give a big thank you to Isaac Newman for once again sponsoring an episode of Meaningful People. Lazik Nishmas, his mother, Rechama Peral Malkalea, Bas Ari Leib, Neshama Shavan Aliyah. And we hope that you watch this episode and you take in the tips and the lessons and the things that are given off in this episode. Whether you need help or you can help somebody, RSK is there. And this is Matis Gilbert. You are listening to the Meaningful People Podcast. The podcast featuring our nation's most impactful, influential, and meaningful people. For those who don't know what RSK is, I guess like set the set the framework. What is RSK? RSK, it's a middle class resource center. We help people get back on their feet. Middle class, hardworking families, somebody going through a hard time, whatever the situation is, we help him with groceries, financial coaching, business coaching, career support, get back on your own two feet out of the kitchen. That's yeah. what we do. So why? So I guess, why did you start RSK? From my memory, I, I didn't even know that you started RSK. I was, again, I knew you for a while and I was following your WhatsApp status and every Friday or something, you'd go, okay, Hevra, you're sitting there in your car and you're like, Hevra, we have 25 families that we're gonna pay off their grocery bills. And, um, and I, I had no idea. I thought maybe it was a new gig. You know, you work for this place in Ukraine. Now you're working for RSK. But Belarus. Yeah, Bel- yeah. yeah. Like that is, it was, it was really amazing. So I guess take us to the, the beginning of why you started this. RSK goes back to, we started when I was in Pinsk in Belarus, part of the Stalin community there. The Stalin Arab has a nice... Um, I mean, he, he started, he, he, he founded Yad Yisrael in Belarus and Ukraine and all over. Um, they, when I was there, somebody invited us to go for Shabbos to Karis there. And we had people coming through all the time, people visiting Chafetz Chaim, Radin, and uh, Baal Shem Tov's son lives in, in uh, is buried in Pinsk. Um, and just Mekamah Sukhdashim all around. And we went for Shabbos to Karisti. It was the first Shabbos that they had. Reb Chaim Leibish Rottenberg for Shei Rebbe mm-hmm. had a Shabbos there. I think it was like 15 years ago, 16 years ago. And I was crazy inspired by the whole, just the whole, the whole thing. The whole, it was a, it was a life changing. Uh, Over there in Karisti. In Karisti. I was there for Shabbos. Um, so it was a, first of all, it was like a 35 hour train ride. What? Uh, from where? From, from Belarus. To, to 35 hour train ride. Karistir. I hope it didn't look like, like the LARR. Like it was a, a nicer train at least. It was, I remember it was like business class. It was like $15 for the whole, the whole <laughs> thing. Business class, uh, thing. Uh, it was very, it was a very, it was, it was a great experience. And we, we were, and just the whole Shabbos was, um, it, 
it was a very inspiring Shabbos. And then I got to know the whole back end of Rip Shaila and what what he was about and how he was and he all about giving and actually helped a lot of businesses and click Kodesh and just all the hearing all the stories. And from there, I was like, we're bringing this back home. And when we went to Pinsk, we literally it was always uh, we would give out from the kitchen there. We would give out, like anybody that would come. We would always okay. We put stuff together. We're giving and we just started the Rip Shiles kitchen, and then we 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 continued giving over there. And then when I moved back, um, actually from there I went to I was in Eretz Israel for two years in yeshiva, and then I moved back to New York, and we started like in 2013 we started Rip Shaila's Kitchen. And that's when we started giving out meals. So we would give out meals during the week for anybody going through a temporary situation. We would give them meals. And then this one time I delivered to a family in Muncie. And it was a, I remember the, uh, 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 sis, the sister called that her husband's going through a situation, his business, and they don't have food during the week. And we dropped off by them meals. Two daughters came, the two girls came out and brought us back the meals. Okay, I went. And they didn't, she, accept it. they didn't accept it. They gave it back to us. And they told us, um, the mother called me like a half hour later, literally tears in her eyes, like she was like choking. And she's like, Ich bin shamama. I don't need the meals, I need the ingredients. And that's when oh, like wow. this uh, this thing lit up. We continued giving the meals, but I was like, okay, we got to forward thinking. We got to keep on moving forward. And that's when we moved on to the grocery. And that's when you saw that. So from 2013, 14, 15, wow. and that's when it happened in 16, 17. That's really incredible. Yeah. Like was, that story is very powerful. Like it says so much. Like we don't, it's one thing you can give me a meal, but in order to keep someone's their, their dignity. Their dignity. They can still have their pride. Like, I can cook. I can cook. But I can the I'm a healthy young mother. I can do it myself. So that's, and then and then from there we went on to. So a lot of times in the house, there's members of the household that if they get meals delivered, it's apparent that it's not their food. Yeah. It's being delivered. They know what their mother's food is like. Yeah. They know what the tom is. They know what yeah, the. that. It's, and it, it preserves not only the dignity of the, the mother, the Yiddish mama, mm-hmm. the Gizintim Yiddish mama, but it also preserves the dignity of the entire household. Maybe the kids don't even know that the groceries are coming from. Exactly. The yeah. Children, the, the whole aroma of the kitchen, the own home. I always said Rip Shaila in, 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 in 1920 would love what RSK is doing in 2020. Because back then it was okay. They went to the, to the local soup kitchen. They went to the local, to the local thing. We, Rip Shiloh would have wanted everybody to have their own kitchen, their own home, their own smells, their own aromas. Uh, I'll tell you what, was... a reframe on that. Not only would, would Rip Shiloh love what's going on here, but I heard a, a Moir de Gazach from, I heard it from Rabbi Yossi Schwartz, the Rav of Kodesh in North Woodmere. I think he was quoting um, Rabbi Shemeyer Morgenstern from Rex sure. He was saying that what, he explained what is it all of a sudden where a certain generation becomes infatuated with a certain tzaddik from back in the day. Right. And I don't know if he was applying it specifically to Rav Shaila. He may have been, um, but it certainly has an application where you see, and I'd love to hear from your perspective what you see going on today with everyone going to Karastir, and there's been a, a surge of interest from this generation in the tzaddik that was Rav Shaila. And he explained the beautiful Indian behind it. He said, when the neshama of a tzaddik takes interest in a specific generation, that generation is awakened and takes an interest in that tzaddik. So it actually may start the other way around, where Reb Shaila's interest in what's going on here in America and what RSK is doing may be powering and fueling all of your efforts. It's phenomenal what what you the 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 shefa that's out there today. The this whole interest you're saying is. It's it's giving over, 
let's let's have that shefa and let's give over that shefa and 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 like you can see everybody's raising money for other people Every, everybody's raising money on their status for yeah. another family member for another person for another everybody is going full all out on this on on on, on the concept of helping families helping the grow there, there's come out no such thing today where people go into a grocery like if somebody if somebody can't put it on their account there's always somebody people calling managers of groceries are calling us on a daily we know this family we know that family nobody's just not having food in their in their house now, obviously there are situations the middle class is suffering hard working families are suffering it's not what it used to be and people are and the 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 the, the, the you know people like it used to be somebody making seventy thousand dollars a year you know he like he was able to make it today's day is 150 you're not making it with a family of kids right so like it's a different like it it, it moved down the 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 only uh, um, status with with the expenses that we have it's gone it, it it moved up the bracket moved up in the in the in the in the paycheck to paycheck uh arena it's very interesting and i mean it makes sense you know it's as time goes on the, the market is changing but i guess something else that um that i know that rsk does is you help out now with specifically with those middle class couples who are struggling who i like how you framed it how the, it's temporary you know it's these people are not uh and it makes it more probably more available for people to reach out and they're okay like listen this is a temporary situation exactly i'm, I'm not like a loy itzlach i'm not a nebuch i'm going through a rough time and it's normal yeah and i and i'd love to hear some i guess statistics if you have you know like how many people uh, are in this are in this pool of you know that, that you're dealing with and and I then I want to speak more specifically about what you guys have, which is the counseling and the coaching. Help. Yeah, yeah, the coaching. So to go back to the the just the, for a second to the grocery part. Yeah. Um, the so we 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 went from the kitchen to going to the grocery, and then when we went when we were giving groceries to people, I realized from my own personal Baruch Hashem Hashem put me through great experiences that I should understand every single hardworking family ever going through a hard uh, a hard situation it's awesome you'll get through it yeah and it's the most amazing amazing place and you're the rock star of society bottom line now what I w understood was a whole time we were we founded the, the the founding of the organization was always with the whether it's from the meals to the grocery and everything going forward, it's all like you're saying, Nachi, Kalakalo, the understanding that the, the temporary part that you're not a lawyer itself, it's a temporary situation and you're moving forward and you're getting out and you'll be you'll be on the other side because Hashem has enough Shefa. I always tell people Hashem doesn't max out at fifteen hundred dollars a week. Mm -hmm. Hashem is a lot more than that. Hashem, sure. Hashem, I, I, you know, I, I was talking to somebody this morning, uh, Navachi crazy stuff going on in his family he has he has a great job his wife has a great job and just stuff going on in their household that they have added expenses and 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 he's like i'm whatever so we're gonna help him with the groceries i'm gonna help him and he, ha he happened to have gone through the coaching but now i was like you need more hashem will will send more you will get more don't worry like and 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 the 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 the, the part that the the when people coming in with these groceries and always they're always looking how can i get how can i move five steps further how can i move 10 steps further and that part is what brought us into the financial coaching and to the all the educational part and the the career support stuff and so just to open up parentheses for a moment before getting into the coaching you mentioned not limiting the the Rabbi Shalom's shefa of what he has in store. I heard uh, from my Rav, Rabbi Shmuel Weinberg, Slonimer Einikol. He said from the Rishoner beautifully that the Rishoner did a a shidduch with a very simple Jew from Bardichev. His name was Betzal. He wasn't a Rebbe. He wasn't a Tzaddik. He was a simple Pashut Yid from Bardichev. Betzal from Bardichev, and at the l'chaim or at the wedding. The the Rishner gave a bracha to his mechutin, and he said, "Yimale Hashem kol meshalis libcha letayva," that uh, Hashem should fulfill all of your heart's desires. 
everything that you that you that you can want. And the Mechudan objected to the bracha. He said, "I'm not uh, I'm not accepting this bracha from the from the Rishner." So the Rishner says, uh, "Besides, what's what's the problem with this bracha? It's such a beautiful bracha." So he says, "Never in my wildest imagination would I think I could ever do a shidduch with the Rishner." He says, "If you limit me to my mishalis libi." He says, then you're, you're capping the Abishur's Shefa. Clearly, the Rabbani Shalom has much more in store for me That's awesome. than I could even imagine in my own heart. Wow. Wow. That, that, is, that, that is awesome. I guess the, 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 the part of the coaching process, I hope that we were able to let people, like, let people know that there is more and there is greater because people really are locked in with their with their framework of what they saw by their by by their parents or by or what they grew up with and and they're like like I'm used to just I'm used to paycheck to paycheck I'm used to balagan I'm used to chaos uh, around finance. So you're saying it's like a it's almost like a culture thing. It's like they they don't make well Ben Ben Shapiro says that a lot, which is not a a raya yeah. <laughs> necessarily, <laughs> but he says that. Uh, poverty is is inherited right. in many ways, not because of the amount of money, but because of the mindset. We'll so, see that a lot. You do see that a lot. I see a lot of people. They don't even realize when they're coming in, their um, tra- uh, traits are being passed down. Mm-hmm. And like people will say, how my father lived like this, and my and and her father lived like that, and and they're like doing kind of similar stuff. And, and you have to empower people to help them recognize their own earning and capacity. And not pass down the balagan. <laughs> wow. You know, it's, uh, What's, I'm curious, what is, what are those, I guess, those, the balagan that you're seeing? I'm curious, some examples. Sure. So the, the fiscal understanding in general in America, right? Yeah. President Biden sw- uh, swiped the one point. Uh, you know, remember he, I was like, he he swiped the card, one point six trillion dollars. <laughs> that's that's the environment we live in. It's not a Hamish problem. It's not a Jewish problem. It's a society, general society yeah. we live in. Um, I remember in Belarus, I, I was always thinking, like uh, you know, like the people there, when they had a thousand dollars, it was their thousand dollars that they earned, and then they earned another another thousand, and it became two thousand. And like when he would go on vacation, it was like he really earned it. He put away money for it. And and if you think of like, there were no points. <laughs> right the points forget about the points i always say credit card points is like a free a free limousine to the casino it's like uh, come have it, come bring all your friends kosher food but end up in the casino there's a reason why they're giving you the ninety thousand points why because they want your interest they, they're 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 looking for uh, recurring they're hoping donors that you can't be paying <laughs> off the 6k they're hoping that you become a recurring donor like like just like what do you mean donor I'm saying like an RSK, like we won't want somebody to like yeah, they donate tolerate, $100 a month. They month. tolerate those that pay They know that bills. you're going to end up being, uh, they, they know that a bigger percent of their of their clients are going to be paying $1,000 a month for a $50,000 credit card for yeah. their interest. So nobody gives it for free. They're not in the chesed business. They're Let's the, be real though. The, the points thing is all, it used to be better, the points stuff. You used to get more. <laughs> yeah. The points stuff is like, right, so 90,000 points, it's, okay, it's $900. You're going to... Go and try to figure out how to have a business spend six thousand dollars in three months. It it it, it plays with your mind. You yeah. want to infuse some halogicity for the from a chevra that are busy with the points. They do a fabulous job of utilizing a system that is there yeah. with people that pay off the credit cards, hopefully, and they know how to work the system. If God bless you, them and their families. If it's you amazing, could, it, but if it's if it's creating a scenario where people are taking on debt that they can't afford that can become problematic obviously 90 99% of the people are not doing that right though if the 1% and he could gain he could you know he'll show amex no problem but bottom line amex is a is is a multi trillion dollar company billion dollar company not from not from giving you um concierge they and not from giving you the the silver card that you feel like, oh my gosh, and I'm a member since, oh my gosh, and like you have this whole relationship with Amex, it's not a, it, it's there to build their wealth, not to build your wealth. They're not in the chesed business and they're not here to, um, but um, yeah, but that's a whole it, credit card. They're not here at all. They're not here. <laughs> but it feels pretty good though, that silver card. 
if that it's, it's like the metal it's meant to make you feel good and it's meant to play with your mind <laughs> it's working <Nahi. laughs> so is, is is the word credit cards for for you and your organization when it comes to dealing with your uh your chevra is that like a four-letter word credit card yeah really yeah people shouldn't have credit cards no not at all i have a debit card and i love it and if i and and if i'm low and my wife is calling me for like shopping right it's a busy yeah. time it's hectic that moment when you reach out to Hashem, when the when when you're when it's a debit card, it's gewalt. It's next level. When it's a credit card, you have that ten thousand dollar credit card. Yeah, it's just it's 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 a scam. It's like it just it, it it stole that relationship with Hashem when you need that extra few thousand dollars. I I hear what you're you saying. Know what I mean, but practically speaking, it's like the the nachash, the curse of the nachash, right? It's it's you know yeah. what I'm you know what I'm referring to. The curse of the nachash is that yeah. the nachash is on the ground yeah. and that he's going to eat uh, the dust of the earth. So the so they ask, well, is that a curse? What what it eats is right there. Never has to go searching for food, and never has to struggle for food. Everything, but, but it doesn't have the relationship. Yeah. Never has to ask. Wow. Hmm. What did we just cancel credit cards? I think we're I think we're speak we're highlighting an issue that exists for a demographic of Yidden that get stuck in a certain way. Yeah. With credit cards. And like anything that is powerful, it can be used for good and it can be misused. And if it's misused, there are certainly pitfalls to credit cards. I don't think that makes it inherently non-kosher, period, end of story. But like anything that's powerful, it can be used well and it can be misused. What is someone supposed to do if they don't have enough money for, you know, let's say they go to the groceries and um, the credit card is going to get them over and they're going to get paid at the end of the next week. So... You're saying is well, they should reach out to RSK. Should they? A hundred percent, and they will learn um, that like the credit card is not there, and they start structuring their finances differently, and they find themselves putting money away into savings, and make yourself. I always tell people, what am I going to do without my credit card? What's if I'm stuck? Okay, make yourself your own credit card called the Friedman credit card, and it's a ten thousand dollar in your savings, or twenty, or fifty. Make that your be credit your card. Be your own lender. Be your own lender. Don't interest free, right? Interest free, and 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 unless you want to earn a couple points on yourself, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the points that you're earning, the the money that you make. Let's say you made a hundred thousand. How much is a hundred thousand? It's a thousand dollars. It's eight hundred dollars. Seven hundred. How much is a hundred thousand points? It's a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. The the you overspend the statistics are you over you you spend between I think it's twelve to to eighteen percent more using credit cards. Really? Yeah. And well, I was, by second. the way, I was kidding. I was saying unless you want to charge yourself some interest, yeah, yeah, like yeah earn no, a couple I, points of interest. Right, got to be a halacha against like that. Percentage <laughs> points. <laughs> no, but but I'm seeing failed you, attempt at humor right there. <laughs> that was my bad. You spend a lot more money using credit cards because of the you you. There's a reason why the merchant. Yeah is ready to take to hit of 3%, 4%. The reason behind that is they know when you're spending on a credit card and you, or you come in with cash or debit, you're spending more with a credit card. It just, it, there's a different feeling about it. That's not leaving your account now. I, ne- not, I never heard that. That's, that's such sure. a I never heard that point. Yeah. That's very important. That's if the sure. merchant is willing to give up three, I four, thought it's just that in order to stay in business, you have to accept credit cards. You're saying it actually drives revenue. Of course. You're wow. spending a lot more money. You don't feel, it didn't just come out of your account, number one. And number two, there's a different feeling for yourself when 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 it's a credit card. It's it's like a it's like a f- it's not fake money, but it's it's not it's not you're not no, it dealing. Is. Ca- it is fake. It's it like, is. It's it's, it's not, not your money. It's like a stock. It's like it's like down the line, and it's in thirty days, and it's like all, all this stuff in the back of your head, and even in the back of your head that you're thinking in the subconscious, you're thinking about that that you spent five hundred dollars in the grocery, and it's like it's five hundred points. Like it, in the back of your head, like it's it's building up your your Karen of points. Like yeah. it's all this <laughs> all this mind games. It's and and pulling out that that card, that metal card, and just you know, it feels it's all part of the the game of the credit card. What do you say that the credit card thing is like the biggest um, is the biggest struggle that you're facing with the middle class that you're trying to help? Is it the credit card stuff, or is it misusing and no. and mis mis the 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 biggest part that I think that we see going on right now, from pre-COVID to to three years later, 
Three years later, by the way. Shemi Shmar. It was three it, years it's ago. Crazy. It was three years ago. Like I saw people posting like three years ago today was my chasana and, uh, and three years ago I was in the hospital. Like now was was the beginning it feels of the lockdown. It feels l- longer or, or like less? No, it's just, it, it just we don't even realize the trauma that people went through three years ago. By the way, yeah. Right? It's a real thing. Um, but I, I find that um, a, a couple years ago, the what $100,000 was doing for a family, today you need to be making 150, you need to be making 180, 200, 250, or whatever that that is for the person's family finances. Um, and people didn't adjust with their with their salaries. People didn't, uh, you know, people stay, people get used to their, their career with whichever company they're in, they're, and, 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 and they're not getting the raises and being ambitious about their raises and then they fall into this 20 30 50 hundred thousand dollar holes and 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 year after year they're getting they get deeper into this hole and that's the real rut now when you come into the financial coaching and you understand what your expenses are and where you really need to be at you right away oh my gosh i'm i'm sixty thousand in the hole this year then it gets a person driving and it gets a person thinking how do i how do i fill the gap I, now you can't just go back to your boss i did financial coaching i went to rsk and they told me i needed sixty thousand dollars more <laughs> yeah it doesn't just work like that but you could ask your boss what more can i do to make myself more valuable to get that raise or if he says you're capped out here you can go somewhere else you can or look for a different look look to for some career advancement like get get yourself different get yourself educated in different areas or different different fields where you can be making more money and that the 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 and back to the the struggle what you're talking about people are not understanding what they really need to be making and the and people like are used to like yeah i'm 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 making 100 i'm making 120 i'm making 150 yeah. i'm making 180 i'm sounds good. like a big number a family with five, six, seven, eight kids making 150, 180, 200, it's mamish. I know people will be like, what? One, yeah, 150, a family of kids is not making it. Make the cheshman, right? 150 tuition. after Meiser, tuition, uh, groceries, one, camp, school, camp, yeah. clothing, one, uh, sukkahs, Pesach, Think of one one therapy that goes on for 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 a kid, or one tour do you need to get, or the health insurance. Or, the num- the numbers don't add up. I, I I personally think in the Jewish world, bechlal, the numbers don't add up. You know, right. like you're you're saying one fifty, a family of five, six, seven doesn't make it. I would say, well, I'd be hard pressed to say, well, how about three hundred? Yeah, I, it's, I'm not going there because then people are going to be like, no, I oh my god, and I respect that, and I yeah. respect that because I think there are ways to make it work. Um, but it's still, it's such a scary reality. And I want to ask you, you had mentioned about like the person who's 60K in the hole. Um, there also must be a, a mental a mental side of it that you have to deal with where people work hard to make money, to, to live life. And, and it must be so demoralizing to be working hard, to be making money and to still be in debt and to still be in the hole. That's probably very difficult. It's very hard, and it's very hard on Shalom Bias. It's um, we get therapists reaching out to us, Rabbanim reaching out to us. What did you do to this family? They came, they went to, they went to the financial coaching, and they're different people. Like what I was trying to do for, I was like, it's in the Gemara. It says about when, 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 when the when the finances, when the wheat is, uh, goes to the bottom of the barrel, there's no there's no wheat left, and it causes Shalom Bias issues. It's it's very simple. When there's money, I remember there was one couple. They came in and they were telling the coach, and they they were mom, they were, they were going at it with the coach. They were saying, he's this and that, and uh, giving all different issues and and she was giving him a mishabarech. Yes, mm-hmm. and fast, about her hu- about her husband about her husband. Fast forward two years, Baruch Hashem. I'm not taking the credit, Hashem. They I I, I see. By the way, I see nisi nisim miracles happen to families that go through this process 
because they're they want to live the right way they want to live the straight way they're not looking for you know i always say quick fix incident tish is business tish and heck of the tish the sky's the limit right yeah. under, i don't under, even know what language i was under the table oh. is the 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 you're capped, out, you're at capped the table. out at the table and over the, when you live over the table the sky is the limit people when when they go because really it's a moon of a talk in here we're talking about when somebody is you know people say i don't want to know you know it's a, well, i don't want to know what's going on i don't want to i don't want to know hashem mm. just sends i was like maybe you don't want to know because you're afraid and you're afraid that hashem can't send it how about look at it right pachinktanam yakovino right like you're like all, all tzaddikim rosh hashivas people people were makbed on, on on the finances right you're and there's a reason why hashem doesn't didn't like the halacha it wasn't just just give my sir just give as much just give 10 percent. there's 20 percent. there's so one second what's 10 percent? i need to know how much I'm, I'm making so we it's 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 part of yiddishkeit to do financial coaching to 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 budget properly i, should, I don't like saying budget because budget people get afraid it's more like a spending plan it's just a little bit having mm-hmm. a a a yeshiva das so when, I like that reframe from budget to spending plan, of course, because I I would imagine that a lot budget's of like diet, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of the fear that people have yeah. is first of all they they don't want to associate themselves as someone that needs a budget, and the reality is that everyone needs a spending plan, and it's not a it's not a specific demographic, it's not a class of people necessarily. Um, so that's number one. Number two, I imagine there's a lot of fear of it's just an overwhelming task it's a full-time I, job it's a fear of that i'm gonna have to um i'm gonna have to carg right i'm gonna have to be like more be stingy thrifty. and yeah. thrifty I'm, I'm not gonna be able to like every family wants to give their they want to give their kids everything they want to give your kids and your wife and you want to be able to to not say oh i'm sorry we can't afford this put it in the budget put it in the put it in the budget put it in the spending plan put it in the spending plan <laughs> and you'll see it there and, and you know, I, I remember there was one family that came and they said, "I used to buy my wife uh, a, a, a gift, um, Erev Yomtiv, and I used to just swipe the card." And he's like, "Whatever, it was just it was a gift, and she knew I didn't have the money, but I bought it anyway because that was just what I did." After he did this spending plan, he would put away a couple hundred dollars every month, and it was in a category. It was it was in one of the you know the items, and. Came Sukkot, came Pesach. He, he bought his wife that present. He said it was so much more. It, it, it was so much more. It, it, it was so meaningful. Because he knew he could afford it. She knew that. She uh. knew that he thought about her every single month when he put away that money, and he and, and she knew that that he didn't just swipe it. Amex didn't pay for it. He paid for it. He made the conscious decision that I'm going to put away this money for this category. Good vault. Good and, vault. and it was it was uh, a built shown bias. It really... I, I know uh, I know someone. I'm not going to say who it is because I didn't ask him permission. What's their to, name? To Momo? Share the story. Momo, what's their name? But uh, an extremely <laughs> Momo, what's their <laughs> very deep. And he shared with me that he would tutor an extra uh, Talmud every single week with like a l'shem yichud, that this extra tutoring is funding the funds that he's saving up to buy something special for his wife, for Yom Tif. Beautiful. And what that did was, Sorry. it took the whole Indian of buying something for his wife, it expanded it to the entire year. So he's not doing that stam on an air of Shabbos, on an air of Yom Tif, you know, in preparation for Yom Tif. He's doing that, he's working on that, and he's in that place the entire year. It also makes the learning that he's doing probably ever so more meaningful. Sure. Because he's doing it for also, besides for Kifayi Shemayim, he's doing it for Ishaan Bayez, for his wife. And and that's the source of all Shefa. Like, we're like that, like, you know, it, it's it's so special when people take out, take take the time to not just to, to, to spend uh, with, a, with a cheshben and to, and to, to have these higher um, driven purposes of what they're doing it's not just swiping and swipe and the whole swiping is just so mindless it's mindless that's what it is that's what that was the word i was looking for <laughs> we'll be right back to this episode of the meaningful people podcast but first i want to give a big thank you and a shout out to our friends at fiber dial our good friend sam schmuley stauber who happens to be friends with Matas gilbert from rsk he has this company called fiber dial and they take care of all your communication needs 
for your business. No matter the size of your business, FiberDial can design, develop, and set up and maintain your communication needs. So make sure to give them a call today, 845-642-2500. You know, FiberDial's mission is to solve the gap in the market of having single provider caring for your communication needs, a provider that is here for your customers, and a provider that makes sure to understand what the customer is looking for before offering a service. FiberDial is there for everything. They have a beautiful mobile app. They also have an incredible desktop app. So make sure to give Shmuley or Sam a call. That's 845-642-2500. They're a big fan of RSK. We're a big fan of them. Welcome FiberDial to the Meaningful People team. Give them a call. And of course, our friends at ILS. ILS, life is full of surprises. Ordering title should not be. We understand that your goal is a smooth and remarkable, uneventful real estate transaction, free of the delays and debacles that too often plague the industry. And since 2003, Infinity Land, Land Services has earned a reputation for their hands-on and proactive approach. They stay on top of every detail and resolve any issues before they even wreak havoc on your transaction so you can close with confidence. You have Infinity Land Services by your side. You need nothing else. So go ahead and go to ilstitle.com. And when you talk to them, you can let them know you heard about them on Meaningful People Podcast. Everyone, enjoy the rest of this episode. You said 18% more is spent when people are using credit cards as opposed yeah. to debit cards. Correct. Because and, that's, it, and that's with everybody. Or, or I that, think it's most people. You have that 1% of the guy who's such a disciplined person, but don't right. worry, Amex will, find, will get him somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, 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 find the, they'll find somewhere to get him. But the 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 back to the, the shalom bias I want to bring up because people are always afraid coming in with their wife. I don't want my wife to know. I just my wife should just spend. Mm -hmm. She shouldn't know, and she shouldn't know the chaos that's going on in my life, and she shouldn't know the chaos that's going on in my business. So two things. First of all, it may be hard for the first meeting and the second meeting, but your wife is calmer, and not just calmer, but she's in on the mission with you if you're in debt fifty thousand dollars i remember this family came in a hundred thousand dollars in debt he came in with his wife and they were mamish like it was real 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 hard hard time for them and they were doing it together she was in it like like people say, yeah my wife just spends my money she spends because if she doesn't know what is going on by you just like you were in debt last month five thousand so this month will be seven thousand and you're doing minimums and you're doing all that when 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 you bring her in on the mission of let's be fiscal you know let's let's have a, a healthy fiscal relationship with the money and the and our finances she's in it with you on this program and another thing your wife understands Right, Adam Chava. Right, we had the curse. Women have, I would say, women have nine months, and and men. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna get shot for this, but and men, when 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 he's starting a business, he's got a year or even two years. Good luck with right? that one. So <laughs> I live in North Windsor, by the way. If you need any, uh, if you need a place but to go tonight, it's, it's witness a, protection. <laughs> it's a it's a real thing. Like like men go through a hard time with their business, starting up a business. How many families come in starting a business? Nobody knows what they're going through. They just built a gorgeous storefront, or they built a gorgeous marketing for their gorgeous business going on, and he's got payroll the third month, the fifth month, the night, the twelfth, and and going more and more and and the overhead and the and the and the sales and 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 market everything that's as going Nahi on. likes to say it's a lachatz nifla it's a hecher de lachatz was that good hecher de lachatz that's like a hot and cold um i i wonder if it's the same with you i so i i have an organization meaningful minute um and i have this unhealthy this fear of going to quickbooks <laughs> <laughs> you, my brother knows about it. QuickBooks is where is all our accounting. And like, you know, it's always like, I hate looking at QuickBooks. You know, like, what are the expenses looking like? What's this looking like? Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that's sort of what you're talking about in a way is like, remove that, remove that, like that not knowing and the fear to know, like own it, know own it. what you're spending. Face the music. Face the music. And don't face it on the 31st of the month either. <laughs> like, um, so where do I sign up? <laughs> <laughs> and actually, that's where, we, where we, we, we started doing the business coaching because we saw so many people that started businesses that for whatever reason, 
Like, you know that you need a, a secretary. You know you need somebody answering the calls. You know you need a salesman. But the 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 somebody doing your books, pe- that just went, like, all the way down to, the, like, the, yeah. lad, the bottom of the barrel, the bottom of the list. And and for some reason, um, I, I saw a business coaching, a very, very strong need. And Baruch Hashem, it's rocking away. We have business coaches that do wonders and call a kavod a shout out to the businessmen that give up their time and give up that their their experiences you have and businessmen volunteer businessmen volunteer wow yeah momo mikam yeah it's, it's really special can i nominate and someone to be a mentor <laughs> Adrava. Momo <Nahi> Gordon. Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> i'm in fundraising okay <laughs> I'm going to make everyone broke. But I, back to an organization, Nachi, I feel you. <laughs> right? But I did hire a controller and shout out to Mrs. Newhouse, who's our controller. And she, Mamish, she's rocking it. What does a contro- controller basically like runs? She runs the financial I can't control. do anything. You I buy a bottle of milk. She wants to know where the receipt is for it. <laughs> oh my gosh. So you were the guy who was asking for receipts. I don't want to do that. That's crazy. Receipts. She's really like Baruch Hashem because like without a controller, I saw myself like we really like you know we're, even though we're running an organization but you got to run it like a business yeah. and Hashem, RSK is being ran like a business because if we want to 10x the organization and be able to service thousands of more people we have to run it like a business and we have to have everything in place that because Lomaisa with knowing the numbers that's how you know the the, the next step you know somebody right. told me about a budget um he was like Stop, give me a break. A lot of hope. And 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 by the way, not to sing out see them that don't do budgets, see them are great with budgets. Litvak was great with great with budgets. But this Khsidish guy, he was a very heartwarming individual. He was like, just leave it alone. You know, Hashem sends Shefa, Sefutaban, it means, you know, the, the train's moving. Everything it's just it's going good. So I was like, look, first of all, Whatever was going on in the last two years, do you want that happening in the next two years? I was like, obviously not, because we're having this conversation. But I was like, when you make a bar mitzvah, right, you can either tell the caterer, I want to, I, I just, I'm making a bar mitzvah, I need food. So either there's going to be tons extra, or there's going to be a shortage, right? You're not going to have enough. Just sitting down with your wife for five minutes. Okay, so you have 20 couples on your side, your family, my family's 20 couples. You're the neighborhood, the 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 shul, the my friends from yeshiva, whatever. We come up. We need sixty five portions. Let's go shefa. Let's order twenty more. So you're ordering eighty five portions. You told the caterer eighty five. You sat down for five minutes. You saved yourself that little bit. That that you know you have yeshiva das. You 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 know sixty five couples are coming, and you set yourself up for twenty extra. Instead of that, just instead instead of instead just a hundred no budget day. just. Just bring food. I don't know, 150, or or maybe maybe it's not 65. He could have just said in his mind because of whatever. Okay, 50, and then he's gonna have to, he's gonna have to, it's gonna be too little. It's all that just mindfulness of just sitting down for five minutes, going over it with your with husband and wife together. And by the way, there's a, a, a section for needs and wants, right? So for all the the women, the men. I just say men and women yeah. out there that think that I'm not going to be able to buy this, I'm not going to be able to buy that. No. You're coming into financial coaching to be able to spend more. Mm-hmm. And from there, and by the way, I saw this somewhere where where when the accuracy, when you ask Hashem in your tefillahs, you ask Hashem, I need 250 this year. I need to be 50 this year because this is what my bu- this is what my budget's calling for. And this is the, and these are the ones. Hashem lets you enjoy life. Hashem wants you to enjoy life, right? Have your needs, have your wants, but know that your needs come first and know that your wants and the the awesomeness of knowing uh, of of the the husband and wife learning the different wants that they that each other put down. Oh wow, you really like that means that that really means something to you? Oh wow, that really means something to you? Like it's it's You wow. think because, again in across the gamut when it comes to the Shalom bias even if you don't need it financially, working together with your spouse when it comes to the finances is probably a good thing. It's healthy. It's healthy. It's healthy. It's 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 a sober feeling. It's um, and even by the way, people think it's only for that middle class guy making one fifty. 
that million we had a guy making a million dollars a year that was in credit card debt wow Wow. Like, how in the world could that happen? Yeah, how could that happen? Because because you're, you're making a lot of money and you think you can spend a lot of money. You yeah, too much. but if you're not calculating, you could be off. Right. The, the guy making five hundred, spending five ten. The guy making a hundred, spending ninety. He's ten thousand dollars richer. Bottom line. Yeah. Right. The guy. The guy making a million. I, I'm, a guy came in making a million dollars a year. And he was in massive credit card debt. And mm. I was like, what in the world is going on with you? And he's like. And and he broke it down. He's uh, and 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 he hopped afterwards when we when we were sitting with when the coach was sitting with him, a million dollars. How much sadaka does he have to give? He ha his expenses are higher. His vacations are higher. His now he has to bring friends with him on the vacation. And now he's got to give more because he's a shiny. Eve. He doesn't have to. He f he feels that obviously if he was the in lifestyle a lifestyle catches up. It, right. If he was in a healthy environment and he understands and by the way, that's a with the charity links, right? We're doing a charity campaign next week, by the way. And, <laughs> and people say, it's like oh, the how are people donating to that charity thing through credit card? Very deep. Felt. We should really tell people just with debit cards. <laughs> debit cards or you know, like donors fund or or right. like you have a you have a uh, it's I'm sure that's what you tell people in coaching is like have a charity account oh for sure have a debit for card sure. for the charity account and by the way these people i remember there was somebody uh uh, uh, uh said he, he asked me uh, because we, we were doing a a, a big event uh, a financial coaching uh share like we would we would we would come down uh, like an awareness we we we'd come down with with our coaches and we were coming to this per to, to this kahila and they were doing a charity campaign and he was like, please, Matas, just do the event because he, he only found out from that we were coming and it was going to it was going to be before his charity campaign. He's like, Matas, do it after the charity campaign. People are not going to donate money. And he was all nervous, whatever. I said, no problem. We'll do it afterwards. He called me like six months later, like way after the, the event and the charity. And he asked me, by the way, can I ask you a question? There's a few people that used to pledge by the charity campaign and they never gave and the there was two people that he mentioned obviously i didn't confirm or the, uh, if they're coming through the financial goals. he's like Mats, i promise you they're coming through the coaching they they pledged and they send in a check every single month on the first wow and there's a six months and, and he was like what's going on and i'm telling you these guys were going through the financial coaching and they put away their miser and they knew how much miser they can give and they made a conscious decision i'm giving this donation and boom, it was good. It That's was healthy. Awesome. That's and, awesome. And 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 it went and it went even further. The people, you know, complaining about oh, the chitterlings, chitterlings, chitterlings coming. If you put away, I know I'm giving five thousand dollars this month for Tzedakah. You're giving two thousand for family, three thousand for family, a thousand for your shul, and whatever. And you have and you set aside five hundred dollars for links. So you give twenty five dollars each guy. You give fifty dollars each guy. You give a, whatever you whatever you decide you want to give, and there's no pressure. The only peer pressure that comes is when you don't know mm -hmm. yourself, your your own identity, right? When 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 you're you're very proud to be a youth, right? We're I, I, and I I can feel it in the in the, in the room. Momo you're especially, yeah, <laughs> Momo especially, right? He Mama she gives off that like. I'm proud to be. I'm good. Oh, Amen. How and, have I? And, and if you if you went to Dubai, you're not gonna feel like you need to take off your yarmulke, right? I'm so proud. I'm not embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed with my yarmulke. I'm proud with my yarmulke. The same goes with the, when you identify the Momo family fund. The fi the, 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 the 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 right. It's it's your family finances, right? Your business is making X amount. You're taking aside money for your family you and your wife and you have your own identity when the next door neighbor buys the expensive or whatever to you my expensive thing i sat down with my wife and we we're putting away for this we're putting away for a paid off mortgage we're pu we're putting away for a paid off hasana we're putting away for a for my for for my for my son to have a a, a, a paid of chasana and a hundred thousand dollars for his down payment. It's so it's so That's insightful. That's a dream. It's so insightful because just to highlight a layer of of this insight, part of the work is to be sameach bechelke, right? To be happy with what one has, right? And it's a big it's a big work. It's a life's work, and not to look at the other people you mentioned, the neighbors or whomever, and say you know and start comparing. 
But if a person doesn't have their own plan and a person doesn't even know where they stand with themselves, they don't know, they don't, they don't have their own financial identity, then they can't even start doing that work of accepting where they are in comparison exactly. to everyone because you're busy second guessing and not knowing and being uncertain about where you yourself stand. And by the way, when his wife asks him for shopping uh, for the for the for the shopping season and she wants to spend ten thousand dollars for her shopping spree, you can't say no because you know what? You have no idea. She has no idea. You have no idea, and you take a schlechter mensch. Hmm. Wow. Right? Yeah, the mensch. <laughs> keep that keep that in my back pocket. <laughs> Gathering these words. You better watch out. You know, I don't his arsenal is growing by the I don't minute. wrestle. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> Knock these clay out. Um, but when you but but when you go through it with your wife, you're 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 just you're you're together in it. It's it's a whole different it's a whole different environment. It's a whole different you're not you're not you're you're, you're not chasing your tail. And 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 the millionaires out there. I mean, there, we we were sitting with a few people recently. Um, there was one. Um, you said mil- they're millionaires. I, yeah, I don't like saying. Mil- I don't like what are their names? people millionaires. <laughs> but like, there there was a few wealthy individuals we were sitting with, and 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 they, they you know, I, obviously everybody was thinking, yeah, nobody does a budget, and and one person was like, I know what I spend every month, family finances. And that's the real way of living. And he's living healthy and his kids will grow up healthy individuals Mm -hmm. because it goes down also when people sending kids off with, uh, you know, an allowance for your kid, going to charge yourself. Not just a credit card that you're swiping. A guy, a guy was telling me swiping, uh, my kids are swiping my cards. I was like, you never told him how much he can spend. You never gave him an allowance. Give give him the freedom of knowing that he can spend a thousand dollars this month, and give him the freedom that he can roll over that. That give him that cash in his in his bank account that he can decide. I'm spending five hundred. I'm putting five hundred in savings, and I, or or I'm spending the whole thousand this month. Give him that freedom, or give him yeah. the freedom that he wants to put away for a trip, or you know, whatever. Build those it is. life skills. It's, it's amazing. It's getting passed down. It's getting all these. I want to highlight another intersection that that you touched on. The intersection between the business coaching and the personal financial coaching. And I think I, I I believe that people understand the concept of scalability when it comes to business. And they know that it exists, and they know that if they build their business at the foundation in a way that is scalable they'll be able to be operationally efficient and they'll be able to grow the business and scale the business and ultimately sustain the growth through the scalability. It's less intuitive as applied to family and personal finances, but the foundation of a couple and getting a, a, a grasp on their own financial plan needs to be able to scale. Because Mir Hashem, when the couple has a child or two children or those families that you mentioned with five, six, seven children. Ten, twelve. The, yeah. Halavai the, the the scalability of your personal finances is that it needs to be in place. And it's much more complex to manage your finances when there's all these moving parts. And that's exactly why we tell people, put away money now. You You, you just had a baby. Start putting money away for the chasa. In 18 years, they're getting married. 20 years, they're getting married. Yeah. It's amazing. It's not and a it's surprise. It's not only the yeah. amount of money. I think people, people, it's daunting the amount right. of money. But the complexity is there. And you need to have a plan in order to address the complexity of the growth. Yeah. And, and it goes with all different um, parts of the family finances. Like it's it, like we need to have like a, like a, like a, a dugish on the family yeah. finances. Cause like, it's a real thing. It's, it's, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the Gordon, it's the Gilbert family plan and be proud of it and grow it and scale it and invest and put away and, and have you, you know, if you want to have whatever you do, yeah, you know, do your, do, do your thing for your family All those finances. Words were sounds like you want to, you said Gordon Gilbert, it sounds well together. How about we, do, we, could we combine our finances and, <laughs> and just like go, go to town? I think the best part is you're building your own identity, your self identity, and building your own Evolve. plan. Yeah, that's and true. because Walked it really is, one, it really yeah. would be fun. To, I always do. To I always do. I'm a mind. I'm a mind walker, as they say. <laughs> no, you could. I mean, you know, there there is there is a. I I hear people for. I mean, people get afraid with finances, and that's why people always. Um, um, 
shying away from it and even wealthier individuals and 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 that middle class guy he's like he's so scared of it and and afraid with his with with the shalom bias part of it it's a big big fear and the, and and the and and people have trauma from it people have like like i i don't like bringing therapy and childhood trauma you know just you know move move, move further and 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 uh but with lamaisa people with finances there's a deep um relationship that people have and everybody in a different level and they're working through it when they're going through the, these coaching process and that's why we're very careful in who our coaches are and that's why the coaches all have supervision and the coaches are 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 every family when they're they're going they're 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 working with a the family they're they they have a supervisor they're, they're bringing it back to obviously everything's confidential 100 percent, and 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 they don't even, even from nachi yeah from everybody even for myself what's their name <laughs> <laughs> i myself don't know the family's going through i don't i don't i don't see anything that goes on in that and i i i i you know my focus is to reach thousands more families yeah and can i know her like thousands of families have come through um it's it's phenomenal every family has seen miracles i want to ask you about that you, you mentioned that you've seen nisim and Gluim. And I'm curious, you know, as we wind down this episode, in terms of, I just want to know specifically with the grocery situation, what you guys have had, um, is, is there a story that sticks out sticks out to you about maybe a family who had this, you know, zafty grocery bill and it went to zero one day because of RSK that rhymed? <laughs> so I'll bring in this one family Clay Kodesh and Clay Kodesh is people in the, you know translate how would you translate yeah, they're, yeah. they're working directly in the furtherance of spiritual development we're nice. in nice which is a, a way of saying it as well Momo I, he, was, he was asking for English <laughs> we're trying to be yeah. efficient here we're not we're spending words no here. for whoever understands that understands Clay Kodesh <laughs> so Hinuch. <laughs> so so to so so people would say you know a Rebbe can never make it a Rebbe can he, he just can't do it and I, this one, this one family, he came in, he's a Rebbe and he's an English teacher and he needs groceries. He's got nine kids. He had nine kids at the time. Um, he went to the financial coaching. He was living in a, like, like they live in Mary Charm and this is here locally. And he was going through a very, very hard time. And through the financial coaching, he saw, wow, like, yeah, my numbers are out. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm done on the, on the, on the second of the month, <laughs> you know, my month finishes on, on, on April 2nd, you know, and he went for a course. He, so, so Chas Shalom, we never tell people to go out of Klai Kodesh. Like we would never right. take that responsibility. Um, or we shouldn't, like people should stay in Klai Kodesh um the people who are great at it and this person he stopped his english teaching he went for a course which we helped him get that course Baruch Hashem. he he's doing a therapy and he's not only he moved to a new to a new house and he donates every single month he brings in cash to the office Gevalt. Gevalt. like you unleashed his earning capacity literally Literally, like his English teaching, he he, told, he was like, "Okay, that I don't have to do. Other people can do that," and he he rocks out his his uh, his therapy sessions, and uh, and it's like to me like that that's that's somebody seeing the the power of 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 himself and how Hashem has that shefa, and you know somebody I just spoke to this week who's coming out of the coaching and the grocery, you know, will veer into the middle class. And they're go they're they're completing their their therapy. Um, they they went through schooling, and and he, they're getting one more month now for Pesach, and they're out. And like these are the 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 awesome parts of 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 the the. And by the way, shout out to the hardworking families of of Klai Yisrael yeah. going through this time. Like I, I wrote on my status uh, on Sunday, I was like, I was like, today's national. 
cash cold day <laughs> for for uh for you know i need money for the grocery I need money for shopping. And this episode is very appropriate for this time of year where it's like people are going to the groceries and you're spending it's, it's pay so off, like. expensive and and clothing shopping and it's so expensive it's mom it's not it's so so expensive going you know the, and, and we hope our hope by bringing awareness to this topic yeah is to not perpetuate any anxiety related to the time of year but rather to Fakert. utilize it as a impetus to inspire action and to highlight that there are tools within Mika Amcha Yisrael there are tools within Klal Yisrael to help people navigate this yeah and we have coaches all over we have coaches in Muncie and Lakewood and Brooklyn in five towns the coaching's free it's not for free okay what's that um like? the reason it's not for free is it's a serious process and we want the we want we want Nachi coming in. You want commitment, and we want Momo coming in, and myself coming in. It's a it's a dignified process. The coaches, even though they don't necessarily need the money, or like their CPAs, lawyers, and people that have jobs during during the day, we want it to be a client service relationship. Wow, we want it to be something that is committed. Now we do have scholarships. Um, I think it in addition to having it appeal to everyone, I think it also lends a certain gravity to something. People treat a service that they, they pay for, for differently. Exactly. And that and that's the Nakuda behind it. And that's and and, and that's I I Seattle the Shemaya, I think this this the success that has has that 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 we see from every family that has come through it's mind-boggling and uh, get them back on their feet getting That's back the on their feet get back on your own two feet and the and the the couples that support each other through the hard time of whether it's the woman starting her own business the 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 the, the husband starting his own business and or going through that job or, or or the the job loss and going to the new job and supporting each other call a cover to them because they succeed i've seen it time and time again that wife that's there, you, you got to go, keep on rocking. And that, that husband that's uh, for each other, they every single one, 10 out of 10 succeed, and even the others succeed too. But it's just a harder yeah. process for yourself, so don't put yourself through it. Well, but rsk.org is where they can go at. And, that's really, first of all, yeah. it's like 9 out of 10 domain name. That's a really good yeah, domain. rsk.org. a three-letter domain name. It is crazy. I have to shout out to Isaac Leader from Rabbi 911. He was like, Matis, you got to get this. That's domain. his domain name, Rabbi 911? Um, his his domain name is, oh my God, he's going to kill me for not knowing this one. Um, I don't know. Uh, try, try Rabbi 911. No, he's, uh, no, Vital One. Vital One. He does oh. the, the flights, the, oh, for real? the medical emergencies. And he was like, you got to do this, uh, R, um, rsk.org. And it was there. I was like, whoa. whoa. And, and, and somebody helped pay for it. And It's incredible. Wow. Listen, rsk.org. And you guys, in the, this summer, Mertesham, you have a baseball tournament. Softball tournament, And I'm yeah. going to be playing, God willing. No Ooh. way. Nice. I am, wow. uh, I am taking the cleats out. Wow! You asked David Schwab. You told him, you said that he's a good uh, first baseman. He was a good first baseman. <laughs> <laughs> um, I my goal is to not break any bones, <laughs> and I okay. think I'll Mirza Shem be happy. But it's for a good oh. cause. The softball tournament to benefit RSK. Beautiful. And uh, everyone, everyone listening should have an anxiety-free prep for Yontif. And you oh, should man. know that RSK.org they're there for you. They're there for you if Chas Shalom, you're in a situation where you have this fat grocery bill and you're like, I don't know what to do. And they're there for you if you say, hey, listen, te in a temporary situation, we need a little bit of a help to get across. You don't need And they're there for you, Stam, if you want some financial coaching. Yeah, not literally. Not need-based. Exactly. Not need-based. Anybody... And be and be that example. If you're if you're if you're running your kahila, you're that guy that asking in your kahila. Go through the financial coaching because most people that we go that we talk to about it, and yes, some are about them, and yes, some people they're like, by the way, do you have a VIP coach? <laughs> you know, but they should, be, uh. you know, like they like you know they need it for themselves. Chazoshalom, uh, Rabbanim are awesome. I shouldn't be saying this, but. But yeah, but people no, the if you're, are asking for their for themselves for their balabatim. They need the right, VIP. Right. They need to hook up the right. 
good. <laughs> a little limit <lima> <laughs> Yeah. But no, or or there it's okay for a rough to say I want to learn more and I yeah. want to be, become better in my own personal finances. It's Absolutely. okay. And they do and they they're stars at it. And the people that are the people have an the people who are the Nachi Gordons, the Momos, the people out there, you come through the financial coaching and you can give it over to your friends and your people and knowing how awesome it is and how what a dignified process it was and what what you what it did for your family. It's it's 10xing and that's what we gotta do. It's a shame. 10x call you so Matisio <laughs> Gilbert, thank you so much for for coming in. Thank I you. know you, you didn't sleep last night, Mr. Shem. You'll sleep tonight, yeah? After the charity campaign Tuesday. After, okay, after the charity campaign, which debit cards only. Uh-huh. Credit card, and we're sending it back. <laughs> Just kidding, but thank you so much. I hope, you know, I think the things in this episode really lend a lot of insight and light. And what we are doing, the legacy of Shaila Karasir. Yes. I love the name. I love how it's connected to the to the source of, of what you're doing. Um, it's not like a dinky name, like Meaningful Minute. <laughs> you know, it's awesome. It's erroneous. Uh, Keep it up. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Meaningful People podcast. Matis. What a yid. What a guy. What a guy. Yeah. So, so awesome. So cool. Well, Pesach is almost here. RSK is busy, busy, busy. Like every other organization that is servicing Claudia Searle, it's a busy time of year. We, We thank him for coming in. We thank him for all the work that he's doing. You know, um, literally helping people live <laughs> you know live live without lachats live a hacker dick of life uh how are Mamish. you over there yeah hacker dick of yeah, dude. yeah whatever i like love a- what new city is doing to you nachi by the way new city has made you very heimish look at me i think it's you i don't think look it's new you. city i think it's new momo <laughs> very deep you know we, we spend a lot of time talking with Ramatis about the avoida of you know taking a look at finances and creating a plan to maybe grow beyond where where a person is. And I was reminded after we recorded that you know, Chazal tell us, Ezehu Ashir HaSameach Bechalkei, right? Who is wealthy? One that is satisfied with their lot. And, you know, a lot of our conversation was, you know, moving out of the complacency and moving yeah. sometimes out of the boundaries and constrictions of our financial landscape and strategies for growing beyond that. So. I was like thinking to myself, like, well, Ezu Asher Asameach Bechelka, how do we, you know, reconcile that? And I was reminded that Rav Shalom Kamenetsky, who's now the Rosh Yeshiva of Philadelphia Yeshiva, he he shared with us while we were in Yeshiva, and you know, finances weren't like top of mind for us while we're in Yeshiva. And he said that there's an application for this concept of Ezu Asher Asameach Bechelka for Ruchnius in spirituality. We, of course, always are striving for more spirituality, but it's also important not to get down on ourselves for where we are today, right here, right now. And yes, there is work to move past it and to grow spiritually, but Ezo Usher, who has a rich spiritual life, one who is satisfied for right now with his chalik and not beating oneself up for what one did and not beating oneself up for where they're not being sameach bechelka even in ruchnius, and also with a, a renewed vigor to grow beyond it, number one. And number two, Rabbi Yossi Schwartz, who I love quoting, Rav of Kodesh, right now in North Woodmere, he told me, I think it's his own chiddush, Ezehu Ashir hasameach bechelka, one who rejoices in their chelik, in their chelik alakami mal mamish, one who rejoices in knowing that they are a piece of godliness, mamish, that is the most joyful existence in the world. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you, Rabbi Yossi. Shout out. Mirza Shai, one day he'll get on this program. One day, one one day you'll be Zaychad to have him on. But anyways, thank you everybody for listening to this episode. Make sure to leave a rating review, uh, subscribe, and we'll be back at you another episode of Meaningful People next week. We love you very much. We love Momo's glasses very much. And we thank you, dude. You're so kind. I know. Be kind, right? Got to be kind, Momo. Right? Yeah, repping yeah, it. Yeah, dude. You're, you're repping it today. Uh, <laughs> all right, everybody. It's a, it's a it's a cold, rainy day out there. I'm trying to stay snuggled. This is where me and Momo. This is where me and Momo uh, 
we transfer into a one-on-one conversation and we we get all of you out of here so enjoy the rest okay. enjoy the rest of your day everybody so momo hope you enjoyed this video from meaningful minute we have so much more content for you you may like this you may like this take your pick let us know what you think